In this lesson, I'm gonna teach you three vital skills that every church drummer needs to know. And I pulled this from my church drummer training camp course on my online drum school, DBO Academy. Let's dive in. What makes church drumming different than other genres such as pop, country, or rock? Is there something that church drummers know that the rest of us don't? Well, yes, and these secrets help church drummers become some of the most well-versed drummers in the entire industry. If you haven't noticed already, a huge percentage of most professional drummers got their start in church. So what are these secrets? Well, let's find out. So something you may or may not know is I played drums at church for well over 10 years. What I learned in my experience being a church drummer has stuck with me more than almost anything else in my whole drumming career. I know it sounds crazy, but the things that I have learned drumming at church have helped me become a better drummer for my rock gigs, my country gigs, my pop gigs, and of course my metal gig with I Prevail. Now there are actually three keys that I learned playing at church that helped me become a better drummer throughout all these other genres. And that's what I'm about to teach you right now, starting off with key number one. The first key quality that every church drummer needs to have is a killer pocket. Now, what the heck is a pocket? Well, this is essentially the ability to make a beat feel really, really good on the kit. You know how sometimes you see a professional drummer playing something on the drum set and your head is kind of bobbing with it. It feels really good. Well, that's because that drummer has good pocket, essentially saying they have good feel on the kit. So in order to help you get a better pocket, first, let's see an example of a beat that feels bad, and then we'll reverse engineer it from there. Okay, so why did that feel bad? Well, one thing that stood out to me right away is that I was very tight. The tighter you are, the worse your drum beat is going to feel. Another thing I noticed is that my dynamics were all the same. So by playing the same volume with my right hand, left hand, and kick, there's just a lack of feel there. A robot could play that in the same way. What makes us different is we can adjust the dynamics or the volume on each limb that we play to get a different feel or a different sound on the kit. And finally, my timing was just a little bit off. It didn't sound like I was right on that click. So to make those things feel better, now we just have to do the opposite of all those things. So let's take it to the kit and talk it out a little bit more. First thing we have to do is loosen up. First, just listen to the music and try to flow along with it. I know it's weird, but it starts to make the beat feel less robotic if you're actually moving less robotic. The second thing is you want to think of your dynamics as something that flows, so think about your hi-hat. Maybe right before you hit the snare drum, the hi-hat slowly starts to get louder and then gets quieter again. It kind of flows back and forth, has that nice push and pull. The third key to good pocket is good timing, and the DBO metronome is your best friend here. Now to improve your timing, you want to have more space in between your clicks because that puts you in the driver's seat, not the metronome. A good way to do this is to go to internal rhythm training and have the metronome on for a little bit and then off for a little bit. Or if you want to start off nice and easy, you could just slowly remove one of the beats in each measure. The fourth key to good pocket is to spend a lot of time living in the song. The more you understand where the music is going, the better you can make it feel. Repetition is always your friend. The second key quality that killer church drummers have is that they are dynamic beasts. Having the ability to play at quiet mouse-like volumes 
but then able to bring the dynamics up to be monstrously loud and bring the power when you need to. You might not know it, but the drummer is the one that's responsible for bringing all of the music in the right dynamic direction. So what I'm referring to is really just the energy, the volume. So if a moment is really quiet and somber, we need to make sure that we are playing appropriately. And the same, if we are supposed to have a really big moment, we need to make sure that we are laying in. So now let me show you how we can incorporate this with the song using five levels of dynamics. But first, this song is in six four time. So that simply means that for one measure, it is the length of six quarter notes. So four four time, which is what we're more used to, is the length of four quarter notes. So that first number is telling you how many of the second number. With six four, it's six quarter notes. So the first level of dynamics is simply a single ride note. I do this all the time for quiet choruses and to keep the band in time while still keeping things quiet and moody. Here, we're just simply gonna play one ride note on beat number four. The second level of dynamics is adding quarter notes on the ride with atmosphere. So what the heck is atmosphere? This is simply little textures that we add to make it a little bit moodier. So what I would do in this case is play the quarter notes on the ride with my right hand, my dominant hand. And then with my weak hand, I have a mallet. So this is basically just a stick with some type of felt or yarn at the end so you can get a really soft cymbal sound. We're gonna talk a little bit more about this in future lessons, but all you need to know is that you can create small cymbal swells, so start quiet and make the cymbal loud by playing quarter or eighth notes with the mallet in one hand. Quarter notes on the ride with the stick, and maybe eighth note cymbal swells with the weak hand with a mallet. That's the second level of dynamics, and it sounds like this. third level of dynamics is building on what we just did by adding in just sparse kick drum notes and a snare drum alternative. So we're always used to hitting the snare drum on that accent, but two options that you have here are either playing a floor tom, it's a little moodier, it's quieter, and it's a warmer sound, or you could play what's called a cross stick. And what I do for that is I actually hold my stick upside down so the tip is facing my arm, so that the back of my stick is hitting the rim. So what I do then is I place the tip of my stick into the snare drum head and I bring the back of my stick onto the rim and you get a nice rim click sound. Let me show you what it sounds like with both of these versions. level of dynamics is adding a fat snare drum note. We can simply build this beat here by adding in a snare drum instead of a rim click or a floor tom. Finally, the fifth level of dynamics is laying more into the cymbals, bringing that volume up. You can even incorporate more kick drum notes or more snare drum notes if you would like. So 
now what we'll do is start from level one of dynamics and build all the way to level five of dynamics using the same song and see how the energy of the song changes over time even though the only thing that's changing is what we're playing here on the drums, which shows you how much power we have. Now, like I said, this lesson is from my full course, The Church Drummer Training Camp. In this course, I teach you the core skills that you need to know, like developing your pocket, your dynamics, your timing, your tom grooves, and so much more so that you can audition for a church band, pass the audition, and play regularly at your church and be one of the best drummers there. And my special offer to you is I'm gonna give you 15 days free to access this course and my entire online drum school, DBO Academy. This this link right here only works for those of you who are watching this video. So click right there, get your 15 days free. And now let's jump into the next point. Now, finally, the third secret quality that every church drummer should have is being able to adapt well in a live situation. There are a couple things I want to address here, but this is more just conceptual things to keep in mind and remember. The first thing is to be able to adapt your drum beat if what you have to learn is too complex. For example, if you just got the songs for church this Sunday, and it's Thursday, you might not have time to be able to learn this drum beat to its full capacity if it's just too hard for you. Instead of trying to pull it off, what I think you should do instead is simplify whatever that really tricky part is. Maybe it's the kick drum pattern, maybe it's the snare drum pattern. Try to find what are the main accents and stick to those, but the little details that make things really complex, maybe you can just take those out of the beat and still have the song feel good, but while just being a little bit simpler. Because remember, you have to serve the song and serve the moment as opposed to just trying to pull off a really complex drum beat. Another aspect of this is being able to adapt well in spontaneous moments. Sometimes what you have to keep in mind is that the worship leader or whoever is on stage might want to actually go back into the song or build in another section of the song, even though you didn't rehearse it that way. And the best way to do that is to stay laser focused on what they're doing. If they're playing the guitar and you start seeing their foot tap and they're getting more into it, they're strumming harder, well then oftentimes you can start building and then that signals to the rest of the band, hey, we're gonna go in for another chorus or we're gonna go into another cool bridge part. But if you're not paying attention, then you might totally miss that signal and then it might not happen at all. And this could potentially be a good thing to bring up to the worship leader beforehand is just asking them, hey, do you ever improvise or do you always stick to exactly how we do it in rehearsal. And that can help you know what to look out for. And the last thing is how to recover from a mistake when you are playing live. Probably the biggest thing is dropping a stick. Now, two things I will say on this. I always keep a stick holder over by my hi-hat here. So in case anything from my left hand drops, I can pick something over here as quick as possible. And I keep my stick bag completely open like this on the floor where my floor tom is. So if I drop anything with my right hand, I can pick up a stick from there right away. And when it comes to actually making mistakes in your playing live, something I learned from the incredible Benny Greb is that when you repeat your mistakes, they sound intentional. So if you accidentally hit something in a weird pattern, come back to it in the next measure, and now it actually sounds intentional. That has really helped me in a lot of scenarios and it truly does sound like it's a part of the drum part. So if you wanna to learn to play at church and be the best drummer there, then click right here to get 15 days free to the full course and to my full online drum school, DBO Academy. And if you wanna learn three essential church tom grooves, click this video right here.